In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at Windows Card Space, a new feature of Windows which lets us better manage our digital identities online and which protects us from various forms of identity fraud, such as phishing. To explore Card Space, I'm going to open up Internet Explorer and we arrive at Fabricam Friends. This is a fictional site that we built up to demonstrate the features of Card Space. This entire site is available as a download sample from our netfx3.com website. Now to sign into the site, I click this button. And you can see that the site offers me the opportunity to log in using my username and password, or to log in using Cardspace. Now I can rarely remember which usernames and passwords I have to use on the different sites I only visit occasionally, so I'm going to go ahead here and sign in using Cardspace. Watch carefully what happens when I hit this button. Here you'll notice that card space spins up on my screen, but that the desktop beneath appears to have gone to grey. This is a visual cue that card space is running in a separate desktop environment from my logged in desktop underneath. Card space is running in a protected environment, which makes it much harder for malware that I might have inadvertently picked up in my travels around the internet from attacking my identity information. So let's take a look at card space. You'll notice here that I have three cards. One of my cards, however, issued to me by, by my employer, Microsoft, is greyed out. That's because this card is not able to meet the requirements specified by the website. When I clicked that button originally to spin up card space, the website communicated back with my machine some requirements that it had, some claim demands that it needed the user to be able to satisfy in order to log the user in. Now we can see what claims the website is demanding by taking a look at one of these cards. Here you can see that Cardspace has determined that the website is asking for a unique card ID. Cardspace generates a unique ID for each card and each site that card is submitted to. So if I use this card at other websites, each website will receive a different unique card ID for this uh, card. This helps protect me from collusion where malicious uh, website owners might, for example, share user databases and expose a great deal more information about me than I was willing to reveal in the first place. Now if we take a look at the details in this card by clicking the Edit Card button, you can see that self-issued cards contain information that is of telephone book quality, i.e. if this information was lost, it wouldn't be any more worrying than if someone had lost a telephone book. I can enter as much of this information as I wish into as many self-issued cards as I need to enable me to create a, an array of cards which can be used in different scenarios on different sites which I trust at different levels. Now in this particular case I'm going to go ahead and submit this card but I'm also going to submit not just the details the website is asking of me but also submit the other optional information within the card itself. That's because I'm willing to reveal most of this information publicly and it helps me with the sign-up process because it makes the whole process much quicker. Now when I click the send button, Cardspace is going to take all of this information, it's going to bundle it up and encrypt it so that only that particular website can decrypt the information. It's going to timestamp the message and it's going to sign the message that is delivered to the website to give the website the opportunity to determine whether or not it's seen this message before. This helps protect the user from various forms of replay attack where malicious software can cache identity credentials and potentially resend them under the malicious software's control. Now in this case when I click send Cardspace encrypts that data, bundles it up, signs it, and sends it off to the website. The website's now received that token, decrypted it, and said, ah, I've never seen this card ID or this token ID before. What would you like to do? In this case, we're signing up for a new account because we've not signed into this site before. So let's click the Create New Account button. Here you can see that the website has synthesized a username and email for me and is letting me uh, edit this information before I continue. I'm happy to continue with what they've got for now. And you can see they've also taken the address information and my name information from the card I submitted and filled out the forms for me here as well. So all I need to do is finish.
So there you can see, with just a few mouse clicks, without having to actually manually enter any information into forms online and run the risk of having my identity fished, I've now signed on to the site by exchanging with the website a cryptographically encrypted and signed token, making this a far more secure and far safer exchange of information than we've ever had before.